I've been a goth since a teenager, even before it had a name. And uh, love the look, love the clothes, love the culture. But I was always kind of bothered with how the church accepts people that have um, a different outer appearance. Hello, my name is Donna Sheehy, also known as Goth Mom Donna of the Grave Robbers Ministry. The Grave Robbers Ministry is a goth ministry of uh, born again Christians that love Jesus, that uh, want to share their faith with other goths around the world. And um, I've been a Christian for a very long time and a Christian goth for a very long time too. I had Gothicon because I wanted to bring the goth community together, especially a lot of the leadership of the elder goth community. And by elder goth, I mean um, goths that are older who have been in ministry a long time, like Lady Michaela from ChristianGoth.com and David Delman from Gothic Christianity and uh, Pastor Dave Hart from uh, Sanctuary Ministry and myself and Blood Dan from Sandusky. So having the goth family under one roof for a weekend is pretty inspiring. But the main goal was to bring us all together so we can refresh each other and uh, almost like a renewal, you know, and, and it really set the community on fire. Gothic is really a state of mind. I think everybody has sort of their own take on what goth is, what it means. Um, I think actually what it means to them is kind of personal, to be honest. Sort of appreciation for the darker or dramatic um, aesthetics. Gothic people generally choose not to reject it, but instead to embrace it and see the beauty in it. kind of like the darker things and more the macabre and the more I discovered about the goth scene the more just I felt like I identified with them and just with the whole romantic the romanticized you know versions in the architecture the art the literature and discovering the music and it was just like spoke to me and I just felt like I really belonged there and the people I felt I could really just connect with and there was just like a really neat connection there. And I really like that. The, the overall acceptance of different shapes, sizes, colors, and shades of people, they accepted and valued, valued you as a person regardless. And as a Christian, that really meant something because that's what 
Jesus' message was all about. Um, first loving God and then loving your neighbor. And it's really the first time I really experienced that. There's like there's I mean there's a there's the clothing there's the of course there's, there's the music all that but there's also like a sense of um, with like every culture is kind of like always judging and you know saying so like okay you got to be a certain way but when you go into that it's it's more like we accept you the way you are we love you the way you are and you know it doesn't matter what you wear it doesn't matter like how you are. You know, we find the beauty in things that other people don't. Like, yeah. uh, you know, the beauty of pain and life and everything together. And, you know, especially as Christian gods, you know, that I think that works even better that way. We realize, you know, all the things that, you know, God put everything together in such a way that even pain and everything can work out to be a beautiful thing. And, you know, he can use, uh, you know, he can use pain to, uh, you know, to uh, bring us closer. Yeah, bring us closer to him. Uh, and you know, just life and death. You know, we weren't supposed to die in the beginning, but God took that and He made it into a beautiful thing, like He always does. He can take tragedy and make it into something positive. I really don't even know how to put it into words per se. Um, it's way more than a fashion statement. It's a lifestyle. Uh, I think it's for people who just have very creative, artistic um, desires to, and they they wear it on the outside, and um, they they have unique ideas. Um, a lot of people who, like I said, dress this way are into some dark, dark things. But uh, thank God, he brought me out. I was never really that outgoing um, growing up. Um, you know, I have Asperger's syndrome and I was never really able to relate socially that well. And, um, you know, I grew up in a very, uh, like, strict Christian family. So I went to church and was heavily involved in the youth group. But I always felt sort of alienated. Um, I've been, I've never been like directly uh, intimidated, but you know, I, I've heard, you know, my, obviously I'm not going to name any names, but um, I've had a youth minister refer to gothic people as, um, you know, uh, Satanists or uh, queers or, you know, things like that. and. It just, I found that really, really disheartening. And I, I wasn't even like really into Gothic culture at the time that I heard that, but it just kind of broke my heart that, you know, someone would say something about, you know, another person that they really haven't even met and never really got to know. And, you know, it just kind of, kind of added to my sense of alienation, which I, you know, thankfully that went away, <laughs> but, um, you know, it was very hard for quite a long period of time. I've uh, unfortunately experienced a lot of deaths in my family. Not that death is the only thing associated with the culture, but it's just, I don't know, I, I guess it, it, being a Christian too, it kind of gave me a better understanding of like what, what God goes through sometimes. 
I, I guess it gives me a, a way to maybe relate to some of the younger ones coming up because that's something else I've been kind of forced into. I'm in my 30s, so it's like kind of surreal in and of itself. But, you know, I get these younger girls and young women coming to me for advice and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you sure you want advice from me? You know, because yeah, I really don't know what I'm talking about half the time. But I'm like, all I can do is share my experience with you. So it's kind of, and, and, you know, those young girls and uh, people don't always have somebody to go to. You know, that understands, like, if they're a cutter or, uh, you know, heaven forbid that they watch a scary movie and liked it, you know. It's like, oh, well, you're not Christian enough, you know, or something like that. Or They still believe in something, and they, they've just either been hurt or jaded or something so badly that they just don't want to be associated with mainstream religion of any kind because they're still searching inside. What I'm finding with God is he's opening doors with me. When I used to smoke, um, about four years ago I quit, but when I used to smoke, I was in my house watching a movie one night, and it was, you know, I had the lights kind of dim for the movie, and I took a drag off my cigarette. And, you know, if you ever seen a cigarette, when it kind of gets that glow when the suction's going through, um, God kind of revealed something to me. He's like, do you see that light, how the room kind of lit up a little bit when you did that? I'm like, yeah. And he he's like that's what you guys are to me I'm like what do you mean he's like you you are my dark ones you go into the darkness you're not afraid sorry um he said um some people are in so deeply that it, it's like somebody comes charging in with the light they're blinded and, and they get afraid but if you have that glow of a cigarette or a candle, it's it's softer light, but it's still light. You can pull them out a little further so that somebody can go in and get them. You know? I think everybody has sort of their own take on what goth is, what it means. Um, I think actually what it means to them is kind of personal, to be honest. To me, goth means it's actually almost kind of like a, a nice little, neat little catchphrase for what I like, my interests, my personality. And I think, you know, a lot of goths, you know, you can have a stereotype. We, we are a certain way, you know, we're, we have a certain type of interest every one of us can agree on but you know I think in, in, in a lot of ways we diverge from it but goth I think is just it's all encompassing the way that I've seen God move is just in, in a way of love I mean I think especially the people in this culture like I said they've been abused by the mainstream church and you know rejected and you know they come to this culture and it's a culture of acceptance you know I think more so than any other culture. We accept one another for our weirdness, you know, our geekiness, for this or that. And I think people really see that in, in like, the, especially the Christian goth culture, you know, you're accepted, you're loved, and they see the, the love of Christ through that, you know? So I think that's, that's one of the big draws. <laughs>
washing machine. <laughs> My Lord, for thee, thou art issued up forth from thy hands, and we will carry out thy commands. And we will flow a river forth to thee, teeming with souls shall it ever be. In Dominic Patrick, and Vele, and the Spirit of Sunday. Just over the years, like, I've gotten closer to God. Just before it was, I really f was identifying myself with the scene in general whereas I should have been finding my identity in Christ. And that's where, that's where the danger is, I think, for Christian goths, is getting caught up in the scene, and there's, there's a lot of vanity that can come with it, because it's, you know, oh, how do I look, and what do people think of me, how do they perceive me, and am I... Whereas it, it shouldn't be about that. It's, it should be, you know, does Christ show through me, and am I being you know, Christ-like to people, and that's where I feel that God has changed me, because I used to be very much so, you know, concerned with what people thought of me and trying to be as, you know, try to look cool, and, and now, you know, I just don't really care anymore, and it's like, I find my identity in Christ, and so that's how I feel like God has moved in me, personally. A year ago I started seminary and I'm getting my master's in divinity and I'm going to be uh, a pastor and, and my, my specialization is going to be subculture ministry with more specifically the goth subculture. And since God has um, been taking me through the journey of walking through seminary, I've realized that um, the way that we present God and our faith in the Christian church is very one-dimensional. It's a flat sheet of paper and everybody comes to it and hits it at the same point. But God is not a flat sheet of paper. He's spherical. And that there's only one way to get to God. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life and no one shall come to the Father except through Him. But the way that we experience God and the way that He grows us is so spherical and so much bigger than we than we can even understand or imagine that um, I think that we oftentimes put him in a box and try to make him into what everybody else has told us. And if we focus on the fundamentals of what Christ came to do and that he is the way and the truth and the life, then our theology and the way that we work out our faith with fear and trembling will grow in, in ways that we can't even imagine. I have, the people that I've been introduced to since I have just the short time that I've been around them have been amazing prayer warriors. Um, I feel like I am learning how to pray, like how to, um, how to rely on God more. They are, they're really strong Christians that I look up to. I've seen that he's got, uh, he's delivered a lot of people out of Satanism, witchcraft, um, pulled people from the edge of suicide, uh, cutters being healed, um, you know, not knowing where to turn or what to do, you know, with their lives, having so much hatred and anger built up inside of them for whatever they've gone through in their life. He has shown them love and accepted them for who they are, not for what they look like or, or who um, other people would judge them to be. God has shown himself uh, as their father and that he looks at their heart. He doesn't look at the outside appearance anyway, you know. But um, I think that he, he's doing a mighty work. Um, it's a, I believe that it's, well, nothing's new with God. You know, <laughs> he's eternal, but it's new to us. It's a new thing for us. And um, I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm excited to see what he's going to continue to do. I think that it's going to be a revival. And I think that Gothic people will come to a place where they can minister to people who would not have even ever listened to a goth before. I think God's going to put them in places and in leadership positions that they themselves probably never dreamed they could have been in. That's what I think he's doing.
Um, I'm a pastor of a small church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, I'm the lead singer of a band called Grave Robber. Uh, we wear costumes and makeup. You know, if you, if you saw the band, you wouldn't recognize me. You know, this way. But um, as a pastor, I've been able to see in my little underground counterculture church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's called the Gathering, and uh, we meet at two in the, two o'clock in the afternoon. You know, it's set up for people who are goths, punks, metalheads, artists, people that you know aren't going to get up at nine o'clock in the morning to go to church. We we wake up at the crack of noon and have church at two o'clock. Well, we have a, we have a family that started attending our church, and they were all um, they were all hooked on drugs, and they were all hooked on I, I believe it was meth, and. Uh, just through the Holy Spirit and through the power of God, the entire family got saved. The entire family is now off drugs, and they're high on my radar as as leader people that will be in leadership for the church because it is amazing. High on my radar to be people in leadership because of how bold and how strong they are in their faith. They they have a real faith because they saw real activity of God in moving in their lives. Um, we've seen people's lives through grave robber. You know, we've heard countless stories of people who had fallen completely away from their faith, but when they listened to a Grave Robber record, they felt like, wow, there is a place for me in the kingdom. You know, um, what happens is you get somebody who's in, in the, that's designed to be somebody in, in a counterculture, no matter whether it's punk rock, goth, some kind of underground metal thing, and they don't feel like they belong because of their, their uh, you know, their particular... Uh, church culture or even the culture in their town they fall away because they, they, they don't think they belong well this gives an opportunity for people to, to be themselves be who they are and still seek after Jesus and, and, and it's okay you know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of an angry world out there you know a world that doesn't accept Christ followers and doesn't accept goths or punks or whatever it may be. So here we have an opportunity to to embrace both our faith and our style or our, our culture or whatever whatever you want to call it. There's a place where we can do that, you know. And that's what's great about you know Gothicon. It's my first time here, and, and already I'm just absolutely absolutely in love with the whole idea and the whole thing. It's great. And we're gonna thank Donna too for spearheading the whole thing. So it's been great. My name is Lady Michaela. I am founder and pastor of a website called ChristianGoth.com. ChristianGoth.com is aimed specifically to Gothic people who are Christian. And because they feel like there's not, at the time, 14 years ago, they thought there was nothing out there for them. They weren't welcomed in church. and. I said, I'm going to make a website that is godly for them. And I would start getting letters, and they would say, I thought I was the only one. Well, you know, I used to produce these types of events and God orchestrates them. And I'm sure that if you had Donna Sheehy sitting here right now, she would tell you God orchestrates these events. The first year that I did one was, I think, 2004, and people literally came to me and said, we'd be happy to travel across the country to come to this event. And so people traveled everywhere. And, and I put the event on not really having all the funds necessary to make it happen. The Sheehy's were instrumental in making that year happen from a fiscal point of view. And then in the second year, we needed a bigger venue. And I was driving around. We were doing this in October, actually in the end of October, beginning of November. So we were driving around. My wife and I were looking for a venue. And we went to these really divey hotels. And they were telling us, well, I'm sorry, we're booked, we're booked. Everybody's booked. So we're driving, we're going back to our house and we're going by the Sheraton, which is like a premium four-star hotel. I thought we might as well go in there and have a look. 
So we went in, and it turned out that they were they were having a hard time getting a particular room rented. So they were willing to do it for half their regular price. So we got to share it in less than we would have paid for a dive in the second year. So so God orchestrates these events. God wants to pull people together, and and uh, yeah, I, I've seen I've seen miracles happen when it comes to Christian goth ministry. My name is Zoe Carriker. Um, I have been doing subculture ministry for the past 12 years. In Romans, um, Romans 7, 18 through 20, Paul writes, And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is the sin in me that does it. It wasn't until I started going to seminary um, and started dealing with a lot of my issues that I realized that the walls that I had built up over these years um, had locked something inside of them. The, the protective walls that I had put up had locked in my sin. And uh, that verse speaks so beautifully to that. My, uh, my self-hatred and self-deprecation is a sin. Flat out is a sin. Because it keeps me from having the relationship with God that I need and that I'm called to have. I got this tattoo about three and a half years ago. I got it in December of 2007, but it was a year-long accumulation of getting this tattoo. Uh, I came to Christ when I was 17. That is a completely different story. Um, I was saved off of the streets. I was, um, I had made a vow that I would kill myself by the age of 20. I dropped out of high school. I was deep into the self-mutilation thing. Um, by the time I came to Christ, I had hundreds of scars on my body. I, um, I had no hope. And then I came to Christ. It was this radical coming, coming to faith where I, I, it was between accepting Christ or committing suicide, so I thought I would try the Jesus thing first. And it was like lightning hit me when I asked for, for him to enter my life. And it was such a radical uh, encounter. For the first time in my life, I felt the living presence of Christ come. For the first time, the, the, the presence, the heartbeat, the breath of Jesus Christ come into my life. I've come to know Christ as the greatest partaker in human suffering. That when I cry, He cries. That when I'm in pain, He is in pain. That's the answer. That we are to
I think that if you asked a mainstream Christian who has no exposure to God what they think of God, they're going to come up with satanic ritual, evil, all kinds of uh, occultic type stereotypes. I think, you know, mainstream Christians, uh, they get their information from mainstream media, which is, you know, it, it is very stereotypical in how it portrays goth culture. Obviously, there is Columbine, and every time there's a school shooting, uh, goths always get the crosshairs pointed at them, which I think is quite unfair. But um, but it really takes just education, uh, proper education, to learn uh, and to teach people about uh, goth culture and that it's not evil or satanic or you know they don't sacrifice animals or anything silly like that you know being a christian you know we're in a we're in a fallen world and you're still a goth it's just you're now saved by grace and you know you learn where to draw the line in certain areas the lord made us all unique and it's he did not when he made us christians he didn't stamp us with a cookie cutter mold we are all different and being goth is, you can be Christian and goth because goth is not about religion. It's a lifestyle, it's interest. It's definitely not about religion. So you, you can be Christian and you can be goth. Well, the scripture is very clear on uh, what he requires. He says uh, in Hosea, who has shown you, O oh man, what the Lord requires of thee, but to live humbly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with the Lord your God. And that's it. He didn't say you had to dress a certain way or be a certain way, just to walk humbly with Him. He also said something to the extent of, you know, your sacrifices and offerings I didn't even want. I just want a broken and contrite heart, a broken heart. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, a lot of times people associated with God, you know, have an affinity toward, with hurt have a friendship with it even, to a certain degree. Very intimate and feel it. And um, those are the people that the Lord wants to reach out and touch and love and minister to. The, the aspect of gothicness is not just about embracing darkness, although some of them uh, do like that aspect. Um, I think the issue is that those that choose the darker side have a number of reasons. Uh, some of them just simply like the art and the, and the things, but some of them are actually hiding from real darkness in their lives. They've been abused, uh, they've been ignored. Uh, a lot of the ugliness they put on, the tattered clothes, the way they do their makeup and stuff is deliberately to scare people away. Ironically, I think goths are trying to scare the darkness away. and. I, th I think we embrace things that we're kind of afraid of or we're trying to conquer and to some degree kids are trying to get past the darkness they've been exposed to in their lives by, and, and it's kind of a, uh, uh, an embrace it so that it won't hurt me anymore. And, uh, so, and Christians can't, as an overall arching, can't say uh, that they haven't been part of that darkness. A lot of these kids were abused in churches uh, and by churches in various forms and formats. And I know that sometimes Christians are well-meaning, but so often um, they hurt the feelings of some of the younger kids. And we had a, we were at a music festival this year and one of the prayer team members came up to one of the younger teens and told her that she was going to go to hell because of the way she dressed. And the reason that disturbs me is because you never know what your words are gonna to do to a person. They could cause a suicide or uh, one of the teens to start um, self-abusing or they could send them off the deep end mentally. And um, I would just implore that as Christians, we should love everybody equally, no matter how these teens are dressed and adults too. It doesn't, it's not just limited to the teenagers, but just by a person's words, words can destroy. I got, I got one, one letter from a boy who said, 
I found ChristianGoth.com tonight, and it saved my life. I was going to kill. I was going to kill myself tonight, and your site saved my life. I get my own life. I have um, had like issues with like being suicidal and just like stuff like that. And like when I was younger, and like when I got more into the whole like I guess it's just the goth because I was interested by it. But they're so Christian, and that helped me. Like I got over it. Like I learned to cope with things, and like I got more into my writing, and I was able to help other people. Like help them, like find God and get over their issues as well. So. Because dark is not darkness to God. So there is no darkness with God. There is no uh, <clears throat> ability for us to be darker than God can be light. And uh, so in the long run, the darkness is irrelevant. Uh, it, we all have darkness in our souls. Uh, and uh, again, there will be people who will deny that. They think they've arrived. They think that. But we're human and we're flawed and we're sinful and we have darkness. And we have to learn how to deal with it. And that's the way these kids deal with it. Uh, at the same time, they're dealing with, with God as an answer to that um, in the midst of all that as well. So it's, it's perfectly plausible to be able to embrace a darker look at life uh, and uh, still recognize that uh, there's a big, tough, hard God out there who can handle a big, tough, hard world.